Hey, what's up everybody? I just want to make a video on this little project that I've been starting. I've been working on for a little bit. Uh, I, I see, as you can see here, I got myself an RF reader and I hooked it up to my Raspberry Pi that I have laying around. And my goal is so that I can use the RF IDs and to read it so that then my Pi can send the signal to my server that I'm running so that I can basically tell who it is that's that's using the tags so that I can update the names on the on the streams. So I want to test this out in my garage for maybe some future streams once I get this all hooked up. I'll show you guys how I did it and the code that I wrote to make it happen. As you can see it's running some code over here and whenever it detects something it's gonna send a signal to the, over the network to my server that I have running on the laptop. And then it should be updating the names now. So I'm gonna give it a little quick demonstration real quick. So you see how it, uh, I, I already pre-programmed uh, each RF reader here for each name. So this one's my name. And if you keep tapping my name, then it's gonna increment the score over here. Then watch this. This is the other, the other RFID reader. So I'm gonna tap that real fast. See the name change. And then notice how my name went into results with the previous score. So now what I have to do is just hook up another Raspberry Pi with another reader for the player two side. And then we should be able to easily update names and scores when we're playing. So this is a little fun thing. And I'll have a little more of a demo once done. Okay guys, so here's the final product. I finally got my hands on a second Raspberry Pi and so I hooked up another RF reader to that one. So the first one's hooked up to this reader and the second one is this reader. Now I have some tags I pre-programmed for their names and you can see like this is the overlay example of the overlay we would have and we just have to tag the RF ID reader to, to touch here and then you see how it changes the names. This one is under uh, is one's name, so we'll try another one. So there, there you go, and I changed the other one. So that's like the player two one, and I'll try the player one one. Score again. So I made it so you can't tap it too quickly, so it doesn't accidentally add, add a score. So once again, we just go over here with another tag. Get close, there you go. So bam scores reset and then you can start over another one. So this should make exhibitions much easier so we don't have to keep changing names and updating scores. And we can even get the auto score to work for ST. So it should be something cool to play around with in the garage and I hope you guys enjoy it in the future streams that we do. And yeah, thanks for watching this video and I hope you guys like it. Give the video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Here's a little demonstration of the client code in Python that I wrote that lives on the Raspberry Pi that does the handling of reading of the RF reader. It's not too much code here. You simply use the library for the RF reader here. And what it does is it reads in whatever ID you send it and then it just makes a client server call to my server. Now the important thing is I, uh, I call one endpoint with one pi and then I will be calling at another endpoint from the secondary pi for the other reader. So one reader goes to one endpoint, the other one goes to the other one. And the important thing is that uh, you see the IP here, it actually needs to be matching what's in the server code IP here. So that will be kind of a pain if you need to configure what's on the pi to be calling your right server. But I figured I'll just set it once to the computer in my house and that shouldn't really change so I wouldn't have to go back and change it but if I want to configure it anywhere else with another network then I'll have to go in and change these IPs now I can try to figure out a way to do this dynamically I haven't done it yet so maybe that'll be something for the future but in the meantime I have to do this manually to make sure the IPs match the client calling the server here so I just wrote a simple Python server here and I gave myself the host name port 
So what it really does is, you see these files here, it uh, updates these files so that the scoreboard and the display logic can use the information in these files to display the right information. The main thing being the stream control JSON over here. That contains the bulk of the information of the scoreboard display. And what's, if you want to see what's in the files here, so it has different things like timestamps, it has like commentator names, it has player names, team names, scores, you know, different countries and everything. So going back to the server code, as you can see, I wrote different endpoints now. So I have uh, update all the data, which updates that file that you just saw with the streams control JSON, and also. So what the, how the RF reader is updating the server information is, is calling these endpoints depending on which RF reader is going to be called. It's going to call this endpoint, for example, the one that I displayed, I demonstrated. And it's, what it does here is then it gets the main JSON file and updates the player one information like with their names. And then it will also update uh, their scores. So what happens is the bulk of the logic is here is where the IDs so basically the RF reader just sends in the ID on the card that you were reading and the server contains information what to do with that ID number if the ID number changes from the one that is currently thinks is player one then it just resets the scores and then it updates its names but if the ID number is the same then what I do here is I actually have a little bit of a window check so you can't be spamming the calls so you don't accidentally like tap the reader twice real fast and you get two calls so you're getting scores wrong you get an extra score when you didn't want it it's really easy to make the sensor read two inputs if you just tap it real fast so i give it a little bit of a buffer like a few seconds that can be changed so when this gets called with the same ids then that's when the score gets gets updated and that's pretty much it so these met helper methods for fetching the names, as you can see the names I store into another little file here called ID map. And with IDs I can store whatever names I want in there. And that's how you register the ID cards with their names to be shown. And yeah, then the server just starts running and it's talking. <clears throat> and not only if the is the ID RFID reader uh, Raspberry Pi talking to this, the server, but also the main display of the scoreboard is also talking to the server, sending it requests, requesting information to updating the scoreboards. So that's how the server, the server contains most of the logic. And if you want to actually check out the stuff, play around with it, I do have it uploaded to my GitHub, and I will link that in the description below in case you want to check it out. Hopefully play around with it yourself and let me know what you think.